we know our players start to get more interested to know more about the champions. And over the years, you know, we've done a lot of work as far as like world building to help players get an idea of where a champion fits in the world. The story is absolutely important, but we wanted to make sure we brought adaptations to the game where it made sense and appropriate. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm head of creative and IP strategy. And for that IP strategy part, that might be a little bit more confusing. Um, what that part of my role is, is thinking about how the characters and the universe and the stories and all of these things are being designed and thought through in all of our different mediums and all of our different products so that players are gonna feel like this is a world they can really believe in, right? It's cohesive and it makes sense. My name is Paul. I'm the director of creative game production for League Studio. I work across our League games in collaboration with teams like Loris to make cool things happen in our game. And today we're going to be talking about uh, an experiment that we're doing with gameplay and storytelling in Wild Rift. A MOBA is not really the best place to tell stories. You know, you have some VO lines, and in the beginning that was pretty much all you had. Um, but you know, there's still this connection players start to have with the champion, even with so little around them. And, you know, we know that players, you know, they love a champion for how it feels to play them. They love the ability, they love the position, whatever that is. But we also know that they like knowing more about the champions that they've come to enjoy playing. And they want to understand more about their personality, what makes them tick, you know, what are they, what are they stressed out about? And I do think it's just a human thing. You know, you just start to connect with that character more and more. I mean, I, I love Oriana. I'm not a great Oriana player, I'm not great at mid lane, but I loved her right from the beginning. It's what drew me in the game. It's like, I, she has almost no story, but I projected a lot of story on her. And speaking from a player perspective, I would love to see more story with her and a greater idea of who she is. And I think it just, it just feels good when you're playing that you know the champion, not just how they feel when you play them, but like more about who they are. A lot of the challenge for Wild Rift players who don't have a lot of history around the League IP uh, is really understanding where does everyone fit in the IP. You kind of have to be an, a librarian and really go deep to understand the state of the world or where things are for certain characters. So we wanted to find a way to um, bring them along on the journey without distracting what they normally do in their core gameplay. And that's why we wanted to package these three Shadow Wild characters in particular who have relationships with each other and find a way to bridge uh, how they're all being released together in a way that feels natural and cool to players. I hope what players like about it is that we've kind of hit it on several layers. So if you're one who just want to just kind of passively be immersed, there's a lot of things for you that are just more like it's a vibe. But if you really want to go deep with it, you know, you can experience Calissa's story, the in-game illustrations, the comic, and just get exposed to it in that way. And just as you obtain a character and play games with the character, you'll get a little more background about why it is as you're playing the game week to week. And if you want to go deeper, you can go back and, and, and read the novel. Read and the it, novel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you've already read the novel, well, then you're kind of seeing it in a different angle because a lot of the stuff we're bringing to the table hasn't necessarily been shown in illustration form. Actually, that's or, something I love too, that, yeah. that it's, it's like you have this novel, but players are going to see it now. Because yeah. before, I mean, I mean, I love reading, right? It's, right. A, it's an imagination thing, but it's also really fun to actually have the visuals, yeah. and have the audio, and have the full experience. Yeah. So I think that's going to be really cool. Callista, spear of the Argent Throne, forswore the life of a princess and vowed to guard her uncle. Again, we have this story, right? We have this ruination story. We have the story about the Ruin King. And we've been realizing it over the years in several different ways. But I think where it really came together so that players could understand like the characters, how they're related in the universe was in the novel. And so much of this, um, this like thematic moment is gonna be drawing inspiration from the novel. But I think the best person to talk about the novel is probably Ant. Thanks folks. Hi everybody, I'm Anthony. I'm a senior principal writer here at Riot. I work in the R&D space on the Riot MMO and I was the author of the book Ruination. So I started at Riot about 10 years ago and the first project I worked on was a new champion who at the time was under the code name Spectral Legionnaire. This was a character that turned into Callista. So creating a champion is a really collaborative experience. It's, the, it's coming together between like different disciplines like design, audio, visual art, um, and writing, and together we create the character of Callista. 
So understanding how Callista acts and how she feels will inform how she moves in game, her abilities in game, how she fights, how she throws her spears, all these kind of things together. And while we'd already worked out the backstory for Callista just in a loose form, we needed to know a lot more detail when you're going into a big story like a book. But one of the things that was really exciting was that there were some other teams at Riot that had started to work in a similar kind of space. And this gave us a chance to really collaborate closely with those teams. So one of the things that was really exciting for me with writing Ruination was to really understand who these characters were in life and, and their, their frame of mind and their perspective and their choices, which informed what they became after, after they died. So one of the examples for that is Callista herself. So in life, she was a deeply honorable character, but she was horribly betrayed. So in, after she died, she kind of became obsessed with those betrayals and seeking vengeance. So with Viego, we know Viego in game as being this dark, sinister, scary kind of character, but the book was a great opportunity to dive into his backstory and understand who he was before he became that. And there's an essential tragedy with, with Viego in that he could have actually been a great leader. Um, if he was given the right support, and he just wasn't. He's not quite like a character like Thresh, who's just a straight out villain and would have been a villain no matter how he turned out. Viego was one who was very much a product of his upbringing. He was very privileged and he was raised as being quite a selfish character. And unfortunately, that's the sort of route that he took. Okay, with that, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Paul and Laura. And just to say, I'm really excited to see these characters. I wanna, I wanna play them in Wild Rift, I can't wait. The story is absolutely critical to the experience overall. We wanted to make sure we had a, a, a list of really cool game experiences that draw from it. So starting with the metagame experience, right, where you will play missions uh, week to week and kind of un understand uh, a little bit more insight into the different champions, mm -hmm. Callista in particular, and you'll uh, earn her um, visual novel. More Callista for me. There you go. Bring it. Her, her, her little comic pieces. So you're going to get to see Callista in a different light than you have before. And so we have our PVE mode, Final Stand, where you get to play Callista's last moment uh, right around her betrayal by Hecarim and the Iron Order. And so really get to see why she becomes the Spear of Vengeance after that. And so following that, if you're just playing Summoner's Rift, uh, you'll experience the Black Man. Uh, popping in the map, kind of spooking, spooking you it's out. It's gonna be a mood. It's gonna be a mood. And if you're like invading a jungle, ooh, bad things might happen to you. Of course, uh, we'll also have some in-game items that have been affected by you know the vibe of the event. So we have something like a, a Infinity Edge version that's a little nicer, and some other items that are not so nice. So players will get to kind of feel that damage via their item choices, and uh, we're really excited to see what people say about that. Well, I just want to say I'm really excited about what Wild Rift is doing. I am, I think this, this um, moment where we're taking like some of these stories again that we've had a little bit more outside of the game and starting to fuse them in like so deeply in a game moment. I am so, I'm particularly excited to see how players respond to this and then to imagine like how we might want to evolve in the future. Yeah, we'll be paying attention and we really want your feedback player, so do as you always do, tell us what you think. We're gonna be studying and paying attention and hope to learn from it, so thank you.